Um, let me give you a super brief overview, and um, but I'll also not spend a lot of time, and you don't need to remember any. Actually, we don't have any SAP abbreviations on here. So you remember this picture here, um, and in the business technology platform, this is how we call our um, product and extension platform. We have four different areas. We have database and data management. That, of course, with SAP HANA is uh, the largest chunk of what we do, and of course, the focus of this lecture here as well. Um, <clears throat> then we have analytics. So, uh, of course, you want to do something with that data. Otherwise, if you only have the transactional records, it is okay, but it is the foundation of doing, like making confident decisions, for example. Then, um, it's a lot about application development and also about integration of, um, in our case, SAP with SAP, but also SAP with non-SAP. And then it's about uh, intelligent technologies. Um, here, and I won't go through it, but these are some subcategories what you need to master um, in order to, be, to have a compelling offer here. Okay, a little bit of, you saw this picture here. And now, now I want to give you a little bit of a different perspective. I already showed you these end-to-end -end processes, right? We lead to cash, everything around the customer, designed to operate everything around manufacturing and supply chain, source to pay, everything around like finding the right suppliers, and then everything recruit to retire. And here, the logos here, again, you don't need to learn any SAP uh, product names, but basically these little logos here are the different products that play into this process. And again, remember, we acquired many of those, not all, but many of these products. And what our customers expect, so if you have, and, and also to be honest, SAP is the company that has the broadest portfolio and the deepest. What do we mean with broad? Broad is really how many processes do you cover and how many sub-processes. And deep is how differentiating do you go for different industries. So SAP is active in uh, 26 industries. And what our customers expect and it's fair to expect that, are sweet qualities. Because you buy from one vendor, you want to have an experience that is homogeneous. And here, I will not spend too much time, but um, I want you to have that in, in the back of your mind. So what do they expect? They expect a seamless user experience, so all products from one company should like, feel and look uh, the same. Workflow, so if you, I, we talked about these processes. If you, for example, have here, let's take this one. Here, there's, there are four products involved. Um, and if you have like, but you want to have an end-to-end -end process. You want to have like from design to manufacturing to supply chain. You don't want to like export data and import data. You don't want to have um, breaks in your process chain such that people need to re-enter stuff manually, et cetera, et cetera. So therefore, of course, you expect one uh, workflow that is homogeneous. End-to-end -end processes, no-brainer, aligned domain models, that's a pretty important one. Um, for example, take the uh, semantic of an employee. So an employee, I mean, you have a name, you have a birth date, you have a gender, you have like a contract start date, you have a salary, etc. So these kind of semantics need to be the same in different products that play together. So we have, for example, the success factors I mentioned. There, we have one semantic. In our um, ERP system, we had, we fixed it now, we had a different semantic. So the fields were slightly different, the semantic was slightly different, field lengths were different, and then, of course, I don't know, certain like, categories were different. And if you then, for example, want to do analytics on top of that data, it's an issue. So therefore, as a company, you need to have an aligned domain model. Um, extremely important for companies is uh, security and identity management. Um, so that is today every company becomes a software company and every software company gets hacked or attacked. And therefore having like a very, very smooth um, attack surface as small as possible and consistent security lifecycle management, having one identity system and being able to protect that is of course extremely important. <clears throat> then coordinated lifecycle management when it comes to updates, for example, 
Also, when you update like one half or one product, which is responsible for one piece of the process, of course, that still needs to be work together with the products that take care of the other half of the process, for example. And then, extremely important, I mentioned the shift more also in not just data management, but analytics. Here, directly in the products, you want to have embedded analytics. You want to be able to, um, to have analytics across several products as well. The second thing I mentioned was that integration is also a little bit um, a challenge if you have so many different um, applications and they, for example, don't have the same semantics. So here, an example of uh, hire to retire. So you need to get from uh, recruiting, so like you plan how many people do I need. Then you recruit, you need to, of course, like uh, onboard and manage. Um, you change like assignments from here to there. You run payroll, so you pay your people, hopefully. Um, and then at some point in time, people leave the company or retire. And in you, when, when uh, you don't have a fully integrated system, then you run into um, quite some challenges. Here, just one example. On the left-hand side, this is an example about UI. I talked about the experience. Left-hand side, look, so look at the left in the moment. These are, again, you don't need to learn them, uh, SAP product names. And this is, so to say, the header bar. And you see that because they don't look like each other. And we talked about end-to-end -end processes. So it happens um, that one person doing one job actually has to switch between a couple of those. And then, of course, it's like very cumbersome and you need to have, like, um, people are doing mistakes, you need to, like, explain, you need to onboard, you need to invest more in training. Um, and here on the right-hand side, so luckily also here, a lot of that work um, already happened, still some um, needs to be done. And on the right-hand side, you can now imagine that things now um, look the same, and this is much more convenient for end users as well. Um, in general, how, do, how should you integrate? Um, if you have something like this in front of you, you can choose between point-to-point uh, -point integration, which still works if you only have a very few um, points and connections that you need to do. Um, or you can use like a platform-driven integration or an event-driven integration on the right-hand side. And left-hand side works if you have like a few nodes, um, but like, I don't know if we have like only 25 um, um, or 26, 25 different, um, different um, products. And to be honest, they need to integrate not once, but multiple times. You end up, of course, with a couple of hundred. Or if you count that um, integrations need to be done not just once from one product to another, you end up easily with a couple of uh, thousands or tens of thousands of integrations that you need to build. And here again, also when you need it, uh, potentially in the future, whenever you face such a situation, some kind of a platform you, uh, makes much more sense when you have more integration points. Um, okay, very briefly, um, and I think you got the point. So in the past, the applications we had like were using a lot of different uh, technologies, also infrastructure. Um, yes, we saw that some used um, Azure, some used AWS. Um, we also have, we had the discussion yesterday, SAP internal data centers that we um, provide uh, ourselves. And um, we also mix, and this will be a reality for many companies, on-premise and cloud. So that is also something we have to deal with. Um, going forward, we uh, do have a clear target picture now. We call it this business technology platform, where we want to migrate all our applications to. And you can uh, imagine it here. We do have still on-premise and cloud. We have like a clear picture of the infrastructure. So it's like Hyperscalers plus SAP. We had the discussion yesterday. Then we have our platform foundation, our services, um, where we provide reusable services. And extremely important is also that, of course, data management. So we do everything 
um, with HANA, so all our applications make use of HANA. So we are evolving HANA into a cloud-native database that also can scale in an elastic manner. Initially, HANA was an on-premise database. And then, of course, for customers, it's harder to put <coughs> like another, um, <coughs> another server in their data center, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <coughs> then I talked a little bit about it, but that was, to be honest, my first action as the CTO of SAP. Um, I initiated that we create one common domain model. And so the foundation and platform we build on, we call it business technology platform, but you know that names can change. So what you should take away is when you are in a more complex situation, we created a thing called, we call it North Star architecture. So that is not the as is architecture, but the to be architecture. And we say that we want all our applications, so all 25,000 people are now instructed to, whenever they make technical decisions, to look into, that's basically a 90-page document, um, to look into the section that is relevant for them, read the five-ish pages, and decide according to that. So whenever someone is now thinking about, oh, um, data management, they should read those pages and do what is written in there. Of course, apply their own judgment, but um, in the end, that is the clear guidance. Um, if they need to do something else, they can raise it and we can discuss. And then, not to underestimate, are cross topics. I just want to give you a very few examples here. Um, one is SAP Graph. And here, usually, companies do have a lot of applications. They have some applications on premise. They have some applications in the cloud. And they need to spend a lot of time to do um, data management and um, aligning semantics. What we do with SAP Graph, actually, is we provide one REST interface for all for these aligned domain models, so for all business objects that we modeled. For example, like we don't call it employee, we call it workforce person, because it can also be a contingent workforce that you hire for a certain period of time. Or in the gig economy, someone is joining you from, from the external, someone is joining you. So we have like a workforce person, we have a customer, a product, um, a sales order, for example. Um, and these objects, independent of where they are stored, which application is actually managing these objects, we have an introduced a layer called SAP Graph. And with that layer, you can have a simple to use REST interface uh, towards SAP um, objects and potentially even beyond. So we have multiple customers that say SAP. Again, you have the broadest enterprise application portfolio. You can de basically define the data model for enterprise applications. And that is now like a, a first step. Um, and we will expand. We basically modernize SAP, um, giving it a modern REST-based interface to make it much easier to work with. Basically, we are containerizing, uh, Kubernetes um all our applications. And then we have an open source project, Gardener, that is the foundation for us to uh, deploy. So we standardize on that. And then we can easily also deploy into um, different hyperscalers, into SAP infrastructure, but also then to a private cloud, because there's also regulated customers, like the German army or the uh, health ministry, for example, um, and they don't run on public clouds. So they really make a decision what is critical for us, what is not critical, and everything which is really critical, they say we don't rely, we don't want to rely on anyone else not a US company, not a private company. We want and need to have it under our control, even if the worst, worst, worst case comes. And then only one more topic, which I also only uh, briefly cover. But also, I mean, we have, we have you and other developers as, as customers in mind, and we provide different tooling. If you are um, like more like a business person, and are not savvy enough or, or cannot program, then these local, local graphical tools help you. Then if you want to be very efficient to building enterprise applications, we do have opinionated tools that help you in the SAP environment, 
but it's not so easy to break out of that. And as a third layer, it's the foundation of all others. It's the, like basically as a full stack developer, by um, fully going to like REST-based interfaces, providing events, etc., you then also can, in a completely non-SAP environment, program against SAP, and that's a very, very large uh, ecosystem, and customers have a lot of demand for that. So, key takeaways, um, a lot of acquisitions can help you transforming a company, going to the cloud, meeting your customer demands, um, and then what you need is a business vision. Where do we want the company to be? What do you want to stand for? But also, um, technically, you need to assess where you are. You need to assess how to integrate. Ideally, you do that with the platform. For that, you need a technology vision of where you want to be. That's our North Star architecture. Um, and then, in the end, you also need to think about uh, developers from people that have no coding experience but this is like more than one billion people in the world are knowledge workers, so you need to somehow enable them, down to like, I mean, full stack development, you know uh, how to program completely, but of course we are fewer people than one billion, so therefore you need to have different tools for different audiences. Yeah, so acquisition, doing acquisitions is easy, the integration work is hard, don't underestimate, and that is not just for buying companies, but also when you want to like, merge new products or create a new product, have this in mind. Um, you need to have a good archite architecture. For that, you need to have a solid platform at SAP that is the business technology platform. With that, I would uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>